So you may have seen this slide before. This is uh, Donna Sarkar showed this at Ignite last year. Uh, and there's really the three ways of working with Copilot for Microsoft 365, adopt, extend, and build. So I'm gonna start with a few slides just to kind of help navigate the demos when we get there. Um, adopt, you want to use AKA .ms slash community dash prompts. That is where if you want to just use Copilot out of the box, you can get a lot of inspiration and great ideas from our the PNP prompts library. However, if you're coding, you're probably talking about building Copilot agents. And today's presentation is focused more on the pro code side and specifically on the extend side. So uh, the difference here, right, is extend Microsoft th uh, Copilot. You're building something called declarative agents. You're using the AI that's built into Microsoft 365. And um, you don't have to supply the AI engine or the orchestration. Um, whereas build your own is where you build, a, we call a custom engine agent, and you're going to use uh, Copilot in, Ad, or sorry, you're going to use Azure OpenAI or, or some service, some large language model, much like the previous demo to drive that kind of a chatbot experience. So today I'm talking specifically about extend declarative agents, pro code, and then how do you authenticate those things, right? So you may have seen this slide before. It just shows how the rag pattern is actually working here. So thanks for teeing that up. Um, and uh, basically, you've got your tenant. Uh, all the content is there. Microsoft 365 Copilot is using that content to answer prompts. And you can also, through a declarative agent, add something called a plugin, which will allow you to um, call an API at the same time. So uh, you'll ask a question that, or you'll make a prompt that Copilot will say, hey, wait a minute, I don't know the answer, but I know how to get the answer. There's a plugin, I can call a REST API. These are just standard REST APIs using HTTP requests. Um, and I can get maybe the answer that way, right? So that's really what we're talking about. When you package one of these up, um, you basically it looks just like a Teams or an M365 app. You have a manif you have a zip file with a manifest inside, a couple of icons, and then we're going to look at all these files. A declarative agent file that says, "Hey, this is kind of your personality. This is the these are the instructions. These are the different SharePoint or graph connectors or other things that you can use in answering questions." And then you can put what they call actions, which are also called plugins where you say, look, you can take action by calling this API. And to do that, you've got two more files. One is a plugin uh, JSON file, and the other one is the open API or Swagger file. So um, just to try to give you a little bit of background. Now, the thing is, how often is that API going to be completely anonymous and unsecured? And I would say maybe the answer to that is never to almost never. Right. I mean, as long, as soon as you start, I mean, maybe if you have even a weather forecast, you're going to have an API key. Right. And if you want to access some business data, guaranteed, there's going to be authentication on that API. They're not going to just make it available um, for random people to go in and read the internal content of your business. Right. So so Copilot supports um, three options for this. One is anonymous. Great for demos because you don't, it's very easy to set up, but not really realistic. The second option is an API key. You've probably seen these before where you're given a key that you put in each request and then it knows that you are a certain developer or you're legitimate. I'm not going to talk too much about these, except I will point out that they are supported. What you do is you put the API key into a special vault using the Teams developer portal. Teams Toolkit will do this for you automatically. And then you reference the vault inside of your plugin file. So that keeps the key out of your plugin file, right? Where people could see it and secures it inside of this vault in TDP, in Teams Developer Portal. I'm gonna show the same thing for OAuth, which is the more interesting scenario. But while I'm talking about API keys, I'll just quickly mention that there is a little bit of unusual way of passing the API key currently in the implementation. 
the API key is passed as if it were a bearer token. So there's an authorization header in HTTP, it's bearer space key. Azure functions don't work that way. Most API key based um, APIs do not work that way. So I don't know why they did it exactly, but maybe it will change. But right now, you're going to have to write your own code in the Azure function or in the API somewhere to validate that API key because, and Teams Toolkit will do this for you, because they're doing it in kind of an unusual way that's not supported in most platforms. Let's go into OAuth. The important thing here is that, you know, an API key, you can validate that this person is, is allowed to call me but you don't know who they are. You don't know who the end user is. Every user is coming in with the same API key. So let's look at OAuth where we actually get to identify the user, authenticate the user, and this is much more the interesting um, scenario. So the way this works is a client app, which is now Copilot, initiates the process. An identity provider interacts with the user to sign them in and creates this thing called a bearer token. And then the client app has to include that bearer token in every API call. Your code must then validate that token. The rub is that Microsoft does not currently have a supported library for validating tokens in Node.js or Python or anything but .NET. And this is unfortunate. You might think, oh no, mCell. No, mCell creates the token. So that's what the client app uses. If you're writing the back end, you're going to receive that token. Right now, there is a long um, uh, article, aka.ms slash entra dash validate. Um, I'll paste it, David. It's just as easy. Um, David very nicely offered to paste all uh, the links in here, but I've got it right here. So, this is um, the the link to the docs article on how to validate the token. And it's many pages long. So how do you do this, right? So just to kind of give you the, the, the skinny on this, right? So um, the way Teams Toolkit does, if you go into Teams Toolkit and you create a new project, yes, I want a declarative agent, I want API, I want it authenticated with OAuth. What you get is when you're running in Azure, it pushes out this thing called EasyAuth, which is officially called Azure App Services Authentication Middleware to authenticate. And when you're running local through the firewall, through a developer tunnel, you're not secured at all. So not only does this maybe leave that tunnel as a vulnerability, depending on what you're doing, but moreover, it's you end up with two uh, plugin files, one for anonymous, one for authenticated. Um, Waldeck Mastercards has improved on this with a sample, which is in our new um, repo. So um, I'll point you to the uh, aka.ms Copilot Pro Dev Samples. And this one um, is in there. I don't have a separate link for it. What he's done is he's said, let's use the same plugin file for both. Let's go ahead and authenticate the users when we're running locally, but we're still not going to validate it because there's no supported way to do it. And so that's okay, but you notice I still have red arrows <clears throat> on the local development picture. So um, I talked to Waldeck and he created this awesome library which made it possible to make another sample, which is what I'm gonna show you, where we're doing the validation in code. So instead of relying on EasyAuth, we're gonna actually, in the Azure function, we're gonna validate the uh, each request. And to do that, rather than I mean, I didn't follow that long article, Waldeck did. And he kindly wrote this amazing library called JWT Validate, which will uh, validate a token from JavaScript or TypeScript. And so you're gonna see how that works. So let's just jump right in, uh, cause I know I'm using up my time with just slides. You wanna see demos. Here we are in that Copilot Pro Dev Samples repo. And I'm just going to go in and show you. Here are the two samples we're talking about. The validated one does the validation in code. The other one is the one where locally you're not going to validate the token. Um, so let's go into the validated one. And you can take a look at this. And um, this is the simplest example, right? So if you use Teams Toolkit to create a declarative agent with plugin, you're going to get this repairs thing that's just a JSON file that it's going to pull a few lines from and give it back to you. So really, really simple. 
Um, here we are seeing with looking at the same thing in um, VS Code. And I'm just going to go ahead and build it. And the nice thing is that Teams Toolkit has added all the provisioning of the app, the app registration, updating Teams Developer Portal Vault, all of it, so that all you really have to do is hit F5, and it's going to come right up. Uh, before I show the app running, let me show you bits of the code. So I'm um, going to start inside of the app package and show you the manifest. And so this is the, our favorite little Teams manifest. However, um, the this is now wrong. This is going to be wrong any day now. So the manifest is changing. The new structure will look like this. And the reason is because we changed Copilot extensions to Copilot agents and declarative Copilots to declarative agents. So it's a bit of a rename that just happened in late September. And so that's there. And then if we look inside of that declarative agent JSON file, um, we can. Yeah, any minute now. We can um, see that inside of there are some instructions and some conversation starters, just one, really. Karen Blair does all the work for this company. I have no idea when she ever gets to sleep. And um, there's an action in here where, which points to the AI plugin. And the AI plugin file is where the action is, right? So this is going to define the actual API to Copilot. These descriptions are super important, by the way. But the important part here is that we're referencing the OAuth plugin vault and saying that we're going to use OAuth and that the information about the OAuth login is inside of that vault. So um, let's go ahead and, and then there's a reference to the Swagger file. So Teams Toolkit, meanwhile, created this application for me. It's an ordinary Entra ID application, but it has to be set up for web um, port protocol and authenticate with the redirect URL pointing to this magical place in Teams where it's actually, so when it logs you in, Entra ID knows where to, that it's okay to send the, the access token or actually the auth code back. Um, it uses auth code flow, by the way, for those of you who are into the details on that. And um, and then the other thing that's in here is the Teams developer portal. And I can come in and notice a couple of things here. One is that I had, you might have seen very quickly, a um, another vault for the, I didn't stop it in time. Uh, you might see another vault for the uh, API keys. This is the one for OAuth, and you can see these are all the standard OAuth settings. If you ever set up a Azure bot framework bot with authentication, these are the same fields. I wonder if it's using the same stuff underneath. Um, so, you know, pretty straightforward, actually, to fill all this in. Notice that they've added a PKCE option now, most recently, to this, which is great, which makes just a bit more secure. So finally, if I go into my code, which is going to receive this, and then I'll run it, um, here is me referencing Waldeck's new JWT library. And the way this works is I'm going to get my request in to the Azure function. And um, this is a fairly normal thing. And the first thing it's going to do is look at the HTTP authorization header and look for a token. It's The syntax is bearer space token. So we do a split on space and get the token. And then we've got the validator object. Um, you're, you're supposed to reuse the validator object. There's a small race condition in here. So uh, plus points to you if you can find it. It's, it's kind of benign. We could end up with multiple validator objects if we got a bunch of requests very quickly at the beginning of starting the service. But in any case, um, and I'm going to fix it, but the point is that we're going to reuse that validator because it's going to cache the keys for Entra ID so that it can validate the tokens without going back for new keys every single request that comes in. And um, then it this is the code to do the validation. So notice you can set these options and say, what do you want to validate on? I want it to be for me. The audience is saying, hey, it, this is for you. Nobody's trying to pawn off somebody else's token on you. And it came from where? From Entra ID. 
So that AAD app OAuth authority is going to point to um, a URL that's owned by Entra ID. And then the scope is repairs read. That's what we're allowed to do. And then we get the token, uh, or sorry, we validate the token on line 61. It will throw an exception if it's not valid. So if we get down to the lines below it, we actually have access to the user ID and username, and we can log those. So let's go ahead and run that because I know I'm there is a limited time here. I could spend all day on this topic because there's so much to know. So here I am inside of Copilot, and I'm going to bring up that OAuth local solution, show uh, repair records assigned to Karen Blair. And I'll do that. And first I get the permission prompt. Is it okay to call the API at all? And um, I'll say yes, of course. So I, I'll just say always allow. So hopefully it won't bother me with that every single time. Now it needs me to sign in. And so this is what the experience is like. You're not going to get prompted every time. It's going to cache these things for you. But when it needs you to log in, this is what it looks like. You get a little pop-up. It's not truly single sign-on. The part of the reason for this is that this works with non-Entra ID uh, identity providers. So if you wanted to use this with Identity Server or Auth0 or Ping Federate or any of the other many ones, Google, any of the OAuth providers, you can do that. Um, notice in the log file, it says it got my name and my user ID out of there. Those came from the bearer token and were validated as being digitally signed. Um, so um, I guess my call to action and resources, this is this one you want to take a screenshot of. Um, we've got the Copilot prompts repo. We've got the um, pro dev samples, the sample I just showed, um, basically the same stuff that you saw in the, um, in the chat. And thank you. Mm -hmm.